Welcome back, friends, to the Hobby Barn Basement and the 86 Skymaster, a.k.a. the Sky Raider build from CY Models and Texas Warbirds. Um, this would be uh, part two. Uh, now that the wings are completely finished, uh, I'm going to walk through uh, the build so far and the assembly of things. Uh, I have found a lot of stuff that should be helpful to anybody who's building this model. Uh, I've made a few changes here and there. Uh, I'm sure it, if you're at a level of building a model uh, like this, uh, especially in composite, you may do some things differently, I'm sure, uh, along the way. Uh, however, these are just some of my findings, some things I've done. Uh, to, so I wanted to share these with, with my subscribers and anybody who's out there who ends up with one of these models. and doesn't happen to have a set of instructions yet. So I'm going to begin with, like any model, most of us start with the wings and the hinging. So the hinges that come with the kit are these. Now they're a Robart style hinge, but they, they're just not quite as robust as a Robart hinge. So subsequently I bought a pack and replaced all the hinging with Robart hinges. Uh, I just feel uh, more confident in them. They're obviously, they're Robart. So that is what ended up in this kit as far as in the ailerons and in the elevator uh, setups. They're just a better quality. I trust uh, Robart hinges. So that was the first change. So there had to be a little bit of uh, drilling out when it came to putting those in to the areas that they're called for. It was minor, but you had to widen the holes because they just weren't quite as big. So that was the first step. And you know, like everybody, epoxy your hinges, take your time, make sure that they line up well so that your surface works appropriately. Um, the next thing, of course, was your horn sets that came with it. All the horn sets were like this. They were a little longer at the bottom. It, they had to be cut at an angle. Uh, when I cut them, I believe they were about 11 millimeters from the base. Uh, and I had to cut them at an angle to fit. So, and then of course they were epoxied in. Uh, the next thing I found uh, that, and you're gonna see, it, when you pull this kit out, there are going to be three sets of push rods. There's going to be an, a 75 millimeter, an 85 millimeter, and a 90 millimeter set. And in order, they are the aileron set, the flap set, and the elevator set. Now, when I pulled my kit out, I was missing uh, a few ball lengths, uh, which I replaced with Robarts. Uh, again, I believe they were an M3 style that's what I ordered and used and they were almost exactly the same uh, they were an m3 by 20 millimeter in the event somebody comes up short uh, in fact these are it so at any rate I got those assembled and as you can see perfect fit the one of the things you're going to discover as you go is there are standard ball lengths with a round head and then there is a ball length that has an oblong head or a flat head. Those are meant to be used on your horn side. So when you see those, don't go, what the hell is this? No, this is something I hadn't seen a whole lot of, so bear with me. I knew what they were for when I saw them. I just didn't expect it when I was assembling the ball lengths. I didn't pick it up right away. So when you find that, just don't be shocked. Um, but that's what they're for, and I had enough of those. Um, the hardware packs, when you go through them, some of the things that you would think would be in a hardware pack as you're going through aren't always all in that hardware pack because they're not labeled. I found some of the things I needed for the ailerons were in another pack, etc. Just be conscious of that. You're going to need to go through and make sure you check all of the hardware packs as you go. Um, there were a few things missing. Um, at any rate, there were no uh, hinges uh, for the uh, gear doors either, which I ended up 
subsequently uh, getting some also. Uh, I'll tackle that here in a little bit. Anyway, moving on. When you install your uh, aileron servos, these nice L brackets came with it. The hardware came with it. They screwed right in. Uh, but what they do not supply you with is the screws to mount your servos to the L bracket. Now, obviously, I don't need to tell you. Make sure you put your Loctite on your screws. Make sure you add some CA to your holes when you, you know, get to that point. I ended up using, uh, let me see here. I believe these were also an M3 coarse thread, and they were a 10 millimeter screw, and they were a perfect fit uh, to hold my aileron servos in. And then, of course, they have a, uh, a, a nice coarse threaded uh, screw to lock your plates down. Now, since you can see them, I'm going to cover the, the armament uh, right now. Uh, now we would not normally do this at this point in the build, you know, you'd finish the surfaces. But I've got to show you, it came with all the mounts, and I mentioned this earlier when I first pulled the kit out. Uh, this was one of the mounts that I corrected, they were on this wing. Uh, but all of these were included with the kit along with the missiles. The mounting system for this is ingenious. I've never seen this before. Uh, but all the hardware came, I checked it all, I made sure, and as you can see, the screws are all embedded. I only had one in a wing that didn't, that either didn't set far enough, I had to um, shim it down into the wing to get it to set correctly. But either way, all these are, are bullets. I believe they're a 4 millimeter bullet, something you would use on an ESC. They glue into your missile. And then you can see the holes, and they just click in. They're stout. They don't come out. You physically have to pull on them to get them out. But when they're in there, they're in there. And as you can see, they hold on everything, including your bombs. And your brackets are on here for your bombs so that they can't rock. But I was super, super impressed with the ease of which uh, your mounts for those were on there. It's just fantastic. Um, so before I move on, I'm just going to stand back here so you can get a good look at how nicely that turned out. With a little bit of weathering, that's really going to be fantastic. Um, the, the light assembly was pretty straightforward. My LEDs didn't work that came with the kit. I replaced them with some I had that I knew worked. Running the wire was pretty simple. You just put it right through the hole. If uh, I ran my, my chaser cable, it came straight over to the aileron place right here and I ran all my wiring straight back through there's a nice open channel that runs all the way back it made it easy so that running your wires won't be a problem as long as you've got a good go get them wire that won't be an issue so moving on uh, to the flap control make sure and I cannot stress this enough that you take your time on the flap control these were all individual parts. These pieces are U-shaped and they face the back. The open end is in the back. These parts were molded in their carbon fiber to the wing shape. Same with these. These are actual sit-down pieces. Um, and then of course you have your, you know, your lock nuts and your parts. Now, there is a round molded piece that you're servo arm screws into. There is a long end and a short end on this, uh, on your rounded end. The long end goes on what would be the top of this, of the leading edge. And make sure that this sits as far down into that assembly as it can possibly go, so that when it's closed, it only comes to just above the top of this. And then you'll have to widen that as appropriate to get everything to fit. Now, moving on to the inside of the wing, you can see I'm using high-tech MW, 645 MWs the whole way through. This is where that second rod goes. I'm using just the regular hardware. Outermost hole was more than enough to get the throw that it required. 
it took some time but coming back to setting these up when you go to epoxy these in use a 30 minute epoxy make sure that you set them all at the same time put them all down in affix them put your flap piece on put your screws through so that everything sits flush in the wing and make sure you move it at least once or twice and make sure the assembly is smooth because if it doesn't it will catch a hitch and then it will not open and close correctly it'll drag and then you've got a real mess uh, I had one that didn't sit correctly which is why I'm bringing it to your attention uh, this one and I had to fuss with it to get it to go and took some sanding and a little bit of uh, silicone oil which is the miracle thing uh, at any rate but I got it going and of course I subsequently fixed that issue on the other side and didn't have that problem again but that's the hardware setup so as you can see and it works wonderfully I have no problem with it now I get the a full 60 millimeters of throw and I know that question is going to come up but I will put that stuff in the comments what what my throws are etc I'm using 20 millimeters of up and down throw in the ailerons and I'm using it's 35 millimeter at half flap and I believe it's 50 or 55 millimeters it might even be as much as 60 on the flaps I, I've got to go back and look um, give me just a second I might have written it down uh, no I did not okay but I know it was 35 at the half flap and I'm positive it's at least 55 at full flap uh, there will obviously be a down mix uh, when the elevator gets put in. I have not got to that point yet. So, moving on uh, to the last section, we have the landing gear. Now, I'm going to reiterate this about 10 times. Take your time. The gear doors are fiddly. This was not a fast process. This was actually the slowest part uh, of this uh, construction. Your gear, by the way, are just phenomenal. They're beautiful. Uh, there were, being that there were no instructions to this, this was kind of a pain in the neck figuring out how it worked. Uh, this came with this little tiny hinge that was supposed to get down in here. I didn't like it. It didn't work well for me. So I ended up using a CA hinge that I just cut out very carefully. That's really thick epoxy uh, resin in that section, so it took a little bit of doing. Uh, and then in the block of wood, that was pretty straightforward. Uh, shoe gooped, since it's nice and flexible. But that gave me the ability to make a nice flexible hinge. Um, moving on, though, you can see your aluminum pieces. How they go in. There's a long piece of hardware that goes all the way through your piece right here to the other side. There is an L bracket up here, up in the top, and then your screw with your washer goes through the top. Now there was a ton of hardware, which I have a whole list of. Um, there were 25 coarse thread screws, four fine thread 25 millimeter, which were these long ones that went right here. Then there were uh, 10 of the fine thread 10 millimeters and then there were 25 of the 8 millimeter fine thread there were 25 or 30 of those small lock nuts for all of this stuff um, there were all kinds of washers there were control horns there were four control horns with the uh, corresponding parts um, at any rate and then there were enough of the small ball links and the four thread rods that you would need which are uh, I don't even know they might even be two millimeter because they're not even as big as 256 at any rate you can see how this is constructed and since this is the right wing pay attention to how these are on here right wing make sure this is on the outside of your u-shape this goes on the inside these parts are not screwed tight. They're only is only tight enough for the lock nut to grab and hold. There has to be the slightest amount of play in this 
so that it doesn't tear everything out. Um, it's firm, it is not tight. So pay very close attention to it. I fiddled with this for well over an hour before I was satisfied that not only did it fit, uh, that it was going to work correctly. There was a little trimming that had to be done down here on the one edge uh, when I put these front covers on. But they, as you can see, turned out very, very nicely. They look scale. The hinge is hidden where you can't see it. And when the gear is closed, they close up nice and tight. Um, so moving on to the last part, I can give you what I used. This was the way it was originally set up. This should have used a medium servo. I used a micro servo. I had a whole bunch of them. These are a either a 17 or a 20 gram. I had a whole bunch. So I made a, a mount, an accessory mount to hold them. Um, the arms were long enough. The push rod arms for these, I have set, I believe, at 45 millimeters. I'm checking my notes for you right now to make sure the rods are 25 millimeters. So from ball link to ball link is a starter 45 millimeters. As you can see, I had to epoxy in, or I did, because I didn't want to drill holes through the doors. So I epoxy these in, make sure that they're at an angle so that when your door, your push rod activates, it has, it can move and follow it. You can't put them straight up and down, they won't fit. Uh, also, as you can see, I used my, uh, they weren't the Robart hinge. Um, I'm sorry, I'm having a, a, a brain outage here <laughs> at any rate. You can see I added the, they're Dubro, I'm sorry. They're the large Dubro hinges. These are what I used to hinge these doors with thick CA. It worked great. I just gently cut a slit into the, the composite on both sides. The measurements for these from the back to the front, they were 12 millimeters from back to the back edge here. They were about three millimeters from the front edge here to this. So that'll give you a good starter. This has worked. Um, I used the second hole in on the arm, and then I used the second hole in on the control horn on every one of these, I believe, except this one on the left wing, only because the way the uh, landing gear was set up, this kept catching on that horn. Subsequently, I ended up grinding off all of the horns to make a little more space for the landing gear. So at the end of it, once everything is complete and you've tested it, take your time. I used a servo tester uh, generously. When it was all said and done and all of these were finished, I have these servos wide together. I have the other two servos wide together and then they run into my radio into upper channels where I, since I'm running Spectrum on a power safe receiver, the X uh, plus uh, channel 15 and 16 uh, are running the landing gear sequencer and they are a five second for the gear and it's 14 seconds for the doors because these are very scale, they close very slowly. So pay attention to that, they do work but this was my setup. But as I said, these holes that came for this were intended not for a standard size servo, but for a medium servo. These have worked fine, other than they're, they're not a digital, so they chatter a little bit when they close. I don't really care. It's, nobody's gonna see it in flight and they've worked flawlessly over and over. So good to go on that section. Uh, that pretty much brings us to a close. Uh, I just want to make sure that you can see the time and attention that went into this. Uh, one last point of note. On the horn placement, to right here, there's a curve right there. The point of this just sticks up past the curve right here. It's 85 millimeters from the back to the middle of this and to this bottom corner right here, it's 84 millimeters, and then it's 12 millimeters from the bottom of the door to that corner. 
I use that as my reference point on every one of these as my placement and then you have to set your angle based on your your servo arm placement so I hope that gives everybody at least some idea of how it was done I know that the uh, competitors plane uses a cantilever system I considered that but there was just no place to put a servo uh, in this compartment and make that functional without the gear getting in the way so with that being said, this was what I came up with. Uh, this gear set came with the JP style controller. I am not as familiar with that and how to set it. Uh, so I use the Spectrum controller as I know how to use that. But hopefully folks, this gives everybody a good head start on the wing set. Now that these are complete, uh, I'm gonna move on to the fuse. Uh, I see it's got a pull pull system for the uh, tail wheel and it appears one for the uh, rudder so when I get to that and get it figured out I'm, I'm considering switching to a 440 rod uh, for the uh, rudder I have not decided yet it's just going to depend on how smoothly that goes but we'll see but we're moving on to that big old cavernous fuse I can't wait um, so I'm looking forward to that next video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them down in the comments. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I'll try and update everything and put all of these in my notes in the, in the uh, video comments or video section. So everybody have a great night. This is Dave with Hobby Barn. Take care.